I think that, that, that life is a spiritual process, at least it should be. And I think that every individual should be seeking a spiritual existence. When I was a child, I was in a coma for four and a half months. Some say less time than that, some say more. I never could quite get it down, but I was in a coma for quite some time. And when I came out of this coma when I was four years old, I didn't know my mother or my father and, or anyone. And almost everything I ever learned was wiped out. Visually, I, I have... Um, temporal lobe epilepsy, and, and, uh, and it resides in my hippocampus, and so it affects my visual memory. I have these episodes that I actually see the image itself. So what happens is I see the whole thing like a movie, and the movie I just take snaps up. Ever since I was a child, I've been having these, these images coming to me talking to me, interacting with me, and giving me information about myself and about other worlds and other places to go and other existences and um, places of safety and places of bliss and places of, uh, but no places of punishment. I started doing stick drawings little stick drawings in a little tiny journal about this big. I, I was mostly writing, because I couldn't draw. And so I started doing stick drawings. And then from stick drawings, I did better drawings. And from those drawings, I did better drawings. And from those drawings, I did better drawings yet. I never went to art school, never took an art class. You know, like George O'Keefe said, you know, an artist's skill will rise to their vision. And in my case, my brain has already got this stuff on the canvas. Because of, the, because of the hallucination that I have. I was out on the mountain and I saw this tree. And out of the tree came this face. And out of the face came this woman. So she's still a tree, but she's also a woman. And she also is a scene out on the mountain as well. A lot of these trees were burned in the fire three years ago, two years ago, whenever it was. But these are metaphysical trees, so they never burn. I know everything about when I painted them, what I felt like the day I painted them, what I felt like the day I saw them, what I felt like the day I drew them. I can, I can give it back to you to every detail, and yet I can't remember other things about my life at all. But I can remember what happened every day that one of these images came to me. This one was totally break down. There was one here that was totally bricked in. That one got sold. You know, I've been accused of being a feminist artist, um, which is not a bad handle to, be, to have, because almost all of my imagery is feminine. And it's not, it's not just sex and, you know, and gratuitous stuff. It's, it's spiritual and religious. But my, image, my images come that way. This goddess here is the goddess of... The goddess that speaks and is silent. So that's why she opens this book. Now this is, again, this is like in the universe. So this isn't just a figure standing here. This is like in the entire universe. The energy is always around me. It's always moving. And it never stops moving. So I'm kind of driven in an in a unusual sort of way. And I think that's connected to my epilepsy, if you want to know the truth. Believe me, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of effort. You really have to go for it, just like you would go for any career or anything you do in your life. I think it's a great tragedy when people don't follow their bliss. And I think if they follow their bliss, their bliss will, leave, will lead them home where they need to go.